don't be doing overtime work on what is not your business. Today, it's all about living in peace. This is one of the five sections of my channel. Feel free to explore the other sections after watching this video. There's tons of information that might speak to you. So, hello you guys. Welcome to my channel. My name is Lara DG. If you're watching for the first time, you're most especially welcome to this family. In this section, I usually ask 10 questions on that topic. Today, being tight and temptation, paying it or not. Well, let's get to it. Have you ever thought about this? I know you have. Why do some churches quote this verse a lot? Malachi 3, 8 to 9. Verse 8 says, Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, What do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithe and offering due to me. And verse 9 says, You are under a curse, for your own nation has been cheating me. I'm sure you've had instances where um, this was an issue. What went through your mind? Let's imagine this. Mm, you finally have your friend since high school in church with you for the first time. And he or she is, you know, a little confused about the mindset behind paying tithes. What would you say to your friend about this topic? So let's think about this. I'm sure you guys will be asking, what has this got to do with living in peace well 2017 happened to be a year where people asked a lot of questions about tithes and if we should be paying it or not or if it's a sin to even pay it the main statement made um during these discussions is that tithes were paid in the old testament you know when you read your bible and was not mentioned at all in the new testament so therefore we shouldn't be paying tithes there was almost a revolution and people were talking about it left and right, you know. So I wanted to put my own two cents in on the topic. Uh, you know, just my point of view on the matter. As you may have known, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a minister. I'm not a prophet. I'm an individual who reads my Bible and will tell you what I know from what I've read. I'm going to ask and answer 10 questions regarding this topic. If there's any you would like to answer, just put the number in, in the comment section below and answer, you know, give me your point of view. Okay. So number one, what is tight? So I asked Google, okay. Google dictionary defines tight as one tenth of annual produce or earnings formally taken as a ta tax for the support of the church and clergy. And Bible Dictionary defines tithe as a tenth of the produce of the earth, consecrated and set apart for special purposes. Leviticus 27.30 says a tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. And verse 32 says every tithe of the herd and flock, every tenth animal that passes under the shepherd's rod will be holy to the Lord. So number two, who paid tithe first? So I did a lot of research. From my research, Genesis 14, 18, 20 says, it talks about the first tithe of the Bible where 10% was mentioned first. It was from Abraham to the priest Melchizedek. He used the tenth of everything to um, recovered to give thanks unto God because God delivered his enemies unto him. Abraham was grateful unto God for giving them victory. So the, wo the word says, Cain and Abel... Um, brought offerings unto God. Cain brought some fruits and Abel brought the best of his animals. A special part of Abel's flock was set aside and given back to God. We can argue that this was the first um, tithe in the world, but hmm, so that could be the first tithe. Who knows? Number three, what was it used for? Deuteronomy 6.12 says, when you have finished setting aside a tenth of all your produce in the third year, the year of the tithe, you shall give it to the Levite, the foreigner, uh, the fatherless, and the widow, so that they may eat in 
your towns and be satisfied. Um, so we broke it down into three. Tight was used for the Levites, Numbers 18, 21, 24. They were the people from the descendants of Jacob, Israel, uh, you know, separated from, separated especially for the work of God, mostly in regards to the tabernacle of their time. And number two, it was used for the temple and the great feast, Deuteronomy 14, Deuteronomy 14, 22 to 27. And number three, for the poor of the land. And that's Deuteronomy 14, 28 to 29. Number four, what percentage of income is a tithe? We all know it to be 10%, but it might actually be more according to the word of God because the law in the Old Testament required multiple tithes, kind of like taxes, for the purposes of the for, for the purposes of time, we're going to say 10% is the amount that has been generally agreed, you know, for tithes to be. Number five, what should it be used for now in this generation? This is where it gets sticky. Yeah. In this generation, or should I say in this in a situation where a church has to pay rent or mortgage and light bill and heat, um, internet, phone bill, often and tithes end up being what is used for the upkeep of the church as well as the propagation of the ministry of Jesus through evangelism. When that church gets to a point where mortgage has been paid off, then the monetary gift to the church can be used for what it was originally meant for. So actually, you can be doing that on the side as well, but, you know, when the church is paid for, then you can now focus on what it's really meant for. But that doesn't mean that the poor and the needy should still not be taken care of. So number six, what happens if you don't pay it? If you don't pay your tithes, it shows that you are proud. It shows that you're immature in your understanding of God's glory. It shows that you don't really trust God to provide for your needs. It shows that you trust yourself more than you trust God. It shows that you don't put God first in your, in, you know, in dealing with God. Okay. So number seven, can God be bought? Is tithing a sin? God is God. He is the all-knowing God, ever-present and ever-living being. You don't have, you don't have multiple choice with God. He says, let there be, and there is. God cannot be bought. It's just like that movie, Batman. How can you black men blackmail one of the wealthiest and most powerful men in the world who is secretly a vigilante and spends his night beating criminals to a pulp with his bare hands good luck to you okay you can't cheat god number eight is it a test of our faithfulness the mentality behind this is that if god blesses you with hundred dollars and you give him ten percent of that which is what ten dollars which is the tithe of that amount, then he'll bless you more. Some will say that your giving doesn't make God do anything. We can't make God do what he wants. He does what he wants, regardless of our actions. However, in his word, he says, um, Jeremiah 17, 10, that the Lord um, searches the earth. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doings. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me and prove me now, therewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Unfortunately, if you don't bring the 10% into his house, then you're likely not to be blessed, and might even lose what you already have. That's what the Bible says. I didn't say it. Number nine, what happens to churches that misspend money? So first, how do you know they are not spending the money in the right way? Okay. Some people have first-hand experiences of irresponsible spending of some churches, which is what I believe started this whole discussion in the first place. However, I want to encourage you that as long as you have done what you were led by your spirit to do, then leave the rest to God. Okay, one, don't judge with your heart and leave the rest to God. Two, don't fight God's battle. He's able to do that on his own. Do your own and let God do his own. Number three, don't be doing overtime work on what is not your business. So number 10, can you use your tithe to file for tax? Matthew 22, 21, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. The government considers church tithes as charitable donations. 
So therefore, you can use your yearly tithes to file because it is tax deductible. If you don't believe in that, then you don't have to. Okay? So first, we have to understand that all we have and own is all because God says we can have it. Okay? Just get that into your... God gave us all we have. Breath, life, health, well, it is not by our power, nor it is by nor is it by our might that we are alive today. We are is actors, you know, and we are still in a story, movie, or drama, if you will. If he says it's time to go, then you have no choice. He has written us in his book of life as actors, and only he can take us out of that book whenever he wants to do so. So whatever we are making in terms of money should be given back to him with a thankful heart, whether in terms of money or goods. If we are required to pay 10% or however much it really is, if we can put it in God's house because you have it, go right ahead and do so. Nobody ever rejects blessings because that's what you get in return. If you don't have that 10% and you still want to contribute to the development of the church and the prop propagation of his word, go right ahead and do so. It might not be called tight. However, again, God sees your heart. And when you can give more, go right ahead as well. It just so happens that we have bills to pay and this is where things get tricky. All, all we have to do is have faith that God in his infinite mercies will shower upon us his divine favor, love, and mercy. Secondly, in the wake, in the wake of Googling, Googling this and Googling that, so much more information is at our fingertips and what we have, what we have chosen to use it for is slowly bringing us to the death of our existence. I say this because this information can either help us or be at a disadvantage to us. In terms of tithing, I believe the recent shot at it is a way to cripple or take a shot at growing churches who need the revenue to keep the church um, building afloat. Without our tithe and offering, how would the church's bills be paid? You know, um, the church is a part of the community and we are the people in that community that keeps it going. Okay, so I feel like people are attached to the word tithe and if they should keep paying it just because it wasn't mentioned in the New Testament verbatim as is in the Old Testament. Don't take matters into your own hands. Don't be tempted into not paying it. If you want to partake in taking care of God's house, God's building, then do just that, all right? You get your reward. However, whoever you give your money to in regards to any house of God and you feel they're not doing their part in putting the money where it ought to go, then don't worry. It's not your business anymore, okay? That's between that house of God and God. You have done your part. That's all that's required. If you don't want to call it tight or you want to give unanimously, then do that. Instead of talking forever about it and, you know, we're not seeing any action from you. My honest concern is that are we feeding the poor, the fatherless, the widows as much as we should be doing? The, the economy and cost of living is high and that makes it sometimes tough to do all that we really want to do in terms of helping, you know, the poor and feeding the needy, even when the church needs help from its people. So we believe that God is able to bless his people who believe and trust and have faith in him wholeheartedly. Don't look at what the others are doing. Let what you do be between you and God. Second Corinthians 9, 7 says, each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give not reluctantly, not under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I'm not telling you to do anything with what you have heard today, but rather to encourage you to read your Bible yourself and understand exactly what it is saying. Let us remember that as a community that exists in this world we live in, <laughs> we need to support local businesses, schools, and ultimately our individual churches as well so that the community can grow as a whole. No one is an island. I used to think that I can do everything by myself. <laughs> but we therefore 
we really need to support each other. Please, let's respect ourselves and stop giving ourselves high blood pressure for no reason. And God willing, we are on this earth for an average of 75 to 80 years. Let's not waste any of that time on things that don't help us grow positively, physically, spiritually, in some sort of way. You have a decision to make and I'm throwing this ball into your court. Yeah, you grab it, good. <laughs> if you made it to this part of the video, I know it's a long one, you know we are already good friends. We are paddy paddy. So that's all for now, my web buddies. If you are new to this channel, my name is Lara DG. Always and forever, ask questions, leave a comment, and like this video by giving it a thumbs up. To get notified of newly posted videos, you need to click that red button. So we'll do some support. I will support you, okay? Let's do it together, okay? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, click. All done. That wasn't bad. <laughs> in the next video, I want you to join me in singing the songs I used to sing when I was younger. Um, I remember some of them recently and wanted to share them with you. I hope you take a trip with me, you know, back, mem back in memory lane to that special time of your life too. Do check out my suggested videos in the description box below. I'm hoping to read from you very soon and I'll be giving shout outs. So definitely give me some chats. Um, love your neighbor as yourself, like I always say, and to rest in peace, we all need to be re living, living in peace. Stay blessed. I'll see you in my next video.